to Good Libations. I'm Ethel Andrews, and I'm a bartender, which, as we know, um, is also known as a mixologist. And this is a show that is going to deal with how to make truly good cocktails and mixed drinks. And you know, the criteria for doing so is you don't necessarily have to use top shelf liquor, but it's necessary that we use fresh ingredients and avoid using mixes, commercial mixes, because they produce an inferior drink that lacks character and lacks distinction. And that way too, we can put our own flourishes on cocktails. As an example, rather than making a conventional lemon drop, if you add lemoncello liqueur to the usual ingredients, you have a lemon drop that is superior. And again, people will be able to detect those nuances that make a truly good drink. And on today's show, we're specifically going to talk about drinks that require ingredients to be muddled. We know these type of drinks have become very popular. And many times berries are used, most commonly mint in the form of mojitos and juleps. And we're going to actually demonstrate during the course of the show how to make a truly good mojito and the techniques that are involved in doing so. And we're also going to talk about other things too um, as time goes on, such as using um, techniques that are not bizarre. In other words, being on the cutting edge is good in some ways, but if you're combining ingredients that don't blend with the base alcohol because you want to appear esoteric or on the cutting edge, you might produce a drink that's peculiar but not good. But getting down to the basics with a mojito, what we require, you don't have to have, again, top shelf liquor, but a decent form of rum. And we need truly fresh mint, fresh limes, sparkling water, and sugar. And in the Caribbean, they make mojitos in a slightly different style that I personally prefer, but some of the guests that we'll have on the show today think otherwise. They make them with dark rum, and brown sugar, which I think produces a superior mo mojito. But American palates prefer a lighter drink. That's why the preference for the light rum and the you know, white sugar and so forth. But now we're going to get down to actually demonstrating how to make a mojito after we interview a couple of guests. The first one that we're going to have is Brian Ohm, who I've done bartending for, uh, for on many an occasion. Yes, you have. Thank yes. you so much. Yes. And Brian, you are not a native Californian. I would like to know, and all our guests that. would like to know too, how is it that you arrived here in Monrovia specifically, and what do you do professionally? And by the way, don't, don't be afraid to get too close to me. I'm okay, afraid. no problem. Um, I came to Monrovia in 1999, and my company actually offered to move me. They first offered to move me to Boston, which I didn't take them up on. And then they offered to move me to California, and I love California. Um, our company headquarters is in Pasadena, so I'd been here a few times. I'd been on vacation in California. So when they offered that, I thought, hey, I think I, I, I could do this. So moved here in 99. I'm in IT, so 99 was, of course, the year that all the computers didn't crash. Oh, yes. So um, did a little time around uh, in the company around that. And then actually got really involved in the community pretty early on. Um, I got pulled into the Foothills issue, um, saving the Foothills from development. That was within a few months of moving here. And then I've done a lot of other things in the community. And then uh, a few years ago, I joined community, service, uh, community services, and I'm actually the chair of the commission this year. We rotate chairs. And uh, so it's been great. I, I love the community. I love the area. I love California. So. Absolutely, <laughs> but like you it. like those lighter style mojitos. Yeah, I think I, for me, it just works out to be like a really, really nice summer drink. I it's just, refreshing. As soon as it gets hot out, I start thinking mojito now, and so yeah, I like the refreshing side of it. When, when was the first time that you had a mojito, by the way? I actually, um, I was going to dinner with a friend of mine in Old Town, Monrovia, and uh, we usually are wine drinkers, and it was just so hot that it just, you know, we, we even brought a bottle of wine to have for dinner. And we saw somebody at a table near us get mojitos and went, oh, what are those? And it just looked so refreshing, we decided to do it. So we tried mojitos and that became my summer drink. I felt, really fell for them. And then I think next up was my summer party and probably having you make mojitos at yes. my end of summer party. So That was a lot of fun too. And we have another guest too, Nicolene Conway. Hello. And, yeah. and I've known Nicolene for a long time, but Very I've also done time. many a bartending and wine tasting gig yes, for have. her and her husband. Yes, you have. And also, Nicolene, we would like to know a bit about your background because you are actually not 
a Native American, so to speak, in the sense that you were not born here. Hi, I'm Dutch Indonesian. I was born in Holland, in Rotterdam. And then when I was two, almost three, my parents moved us here and been here ever since. And I'm a Californian American person. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And I've known you for a long time, and yeah. your palate has become sophisticated as time has gone on. <laughs> you started out basically as almost like a Pepsi generation type person, yes, then you got right. into fine wine yep. and into finer cocktails. That's right. I love yes. your drinks too. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you. And anyway, we're going to get down to the business of making a good mojito. And I'm going to put these people to work. Now, Brian is an expert muddler. <laughs> He's in a bit of a muddle, you see. And when we make mojitos, usually I use a mix of um, simple syrup and table sugar, but this time we're gonna do it just with table sugar. And when I muddle mint, I don't just do it um, with the lime and with the sugar or the simple syrup, but I do it in the rum because we want those um, oils in the mint to infuse those essential oils with the rum so that you get a truly good flavor out of that mojito. And Brian, hey, don't hold back. Start tearing okay, up me, that mint. Absolutely. Tear it up. And you leave stems out, right? So you just get down to the yeah, leaves. Yeah, okay. usually I do, but sometimes I'll put stems in. Not a big deal. Okay. Yeah, I think we need Anything a enough? tad more in, in both of them. Okay. Mm, I can smell the mint. Yes, yes, and again. This is when you start salivating. Yeah. It's, like, yeah. <laughs> it's almost a mojito. Yes. And when she pours the rum, I start salivating. <laughs> you got it. You got it. And this is another thing, too. We're using chimney glasses, which is the proper barware for a mojito. Because, again, it keeps the infusion and the flavors within the, the glass so that when you taste them, you're really going to get that unique flavor. And anyway, well, we have one muddler. <laughs> so we start muddling. And Nicolene, you want to cut limes? Sure. And quarter them. Quarter them. Yep. And there's a cheesy plastic knife, but it works. Hey, whatever. Any port in a storm. Whatever That's whatever. the thing. Look, look at that. And again, muddling is a labor-intensive technique. Uh, and there's a real art to it because uh -oh. you don't want to overdo. <laughs> but by the same token, too, you don't want to not bruise the mint enough to get that good flavor. How's that? Is that good? That's good. Yeah, that's good. And I'll let you inspect my muddling and see if I've muddled well. Sounds like a Harry Potter thing. <laughs> Very good. You're a good chemist. <laughs> <laughs> Better drink I Yeah, I was going <laughs> to. <laughs> yes, work uh, is the curse of the drinking class. We know that. Um, Another thing, too, there, there are um, important uh, reasons why drinks are garnished a certain way. There's appropriate reasons for that and why certain garnishes are used in certain drinks, and some of them appear bizarre. Um, as an example, traditionally, a lemon slice is used to garnish a whiskey sour as well as a maraschino cherry, even though um, cherry doesn't appear to be a natural ingredient for a whiskey sour, but there is a reason for that. Hey, it looks like we've done a pretty good job here. Hey, so, I, can I ask one question? I you certainly can. Now, I remember when we started these, we didn't have a muddler, because I actually didn't even know such a thing existed, and then a friend gave it to me because we made so many mojitos. Yes. So you can use something else if people don't oh, have one, right? you could use even a metal teaspoon or, or okay. tablespoon, anything that will work. Um, a lot of people use glass, you know, muddlers, and those are fine too, but they have a tendency to maybe over extract, you know, whatever you're muddling, the berries or the mint or whatever. Boy, this is a little bit recalcitrant here, but we'll make it work. It'll be all happy once it hydrates in the rum. Oh, you got that right. You got that right. Keep muddling. Keep more muddling. To muddle. Oh, you, yeah, are you, you gonna... got more to muddle, but we got to add yeah, rum. rum and we're of course going to add more rum too, because we don't want these to be sissy drinks. <laughs> you know, what's the point of having something good? And, and what is your nickname from parties? Hurricane Ethel. Hurricane <laughs> Ethel. And that, there's a reason for that, because yeah. we made hurricanes <laughs> from scratch. Yes, you did. During Mardi Gras and also during the um, Saints. Um, yep, what was that, that was during the uh, Mardi Gras party during the Saints. That's right. Yep. That's right. And it's always good to put the spent shells in the drinks. And you want to use generous amounts of lime, not, you know, so little that people are not going to be able to appreciate we do some lime? The combination, sure. Just go ahead and 
Yeah. You know, put so, three of those in there. And we'll make Brian squeeze the limes, do limes? also. Absolutely. He's going to be a limey. <laughs> He's German. Okay, am I doing this turning one? him to a limey. <laughs> And can we leave the limes inside the drink? Yep, leave those spent shells in the drink. And, and, and again, there's a, there's a good reason for that. Because we want can we the flavors suck the to limes continue. after the drink? <laughs> you certainly can. Because they'll have lots of um, rum essence within them. And that's, that's what we want. How many limes are you doing in three. each one? Just three. Yeah, okay. just How many three. Have there? Okay, that was three. And we got to top them off, you know, with just enough ice which I will clumsily put in each glass, as I always do. And then we're going to you know, top it off with sparkling water and add a bit, <laughs> yeah. a bit more rum on the top, too, because that's, that's, that's that's healthy. Healthy. Yeah. subtle is good, but so subtle that you don't notice it is not good. <laughs> and then it to taste, and taste good. So sparkling water, what's the difference between that and tonic water? Oh, a world of difference. Is it tonic water is made with quinine, and you're going to get a bitter tasting drink. That's fine if you're going to have, um, you know, what is that uh, gin based drink that people, gin and tonic, oh, like okay. so much? So it's better to use sparkling water. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And I accidentally bought the wrong one one time. I know if you look on the back, it just says water. The other one has additives, right? You, you see minerals or salt or something in it. Yeah. Little. Better to have a longer spoon, too. Oops. Sorry about that caps are coming off and all kinds of things are happening here. And also, it's nice to have, you know, a, a bit of a garnish. Oh, nice. And it doesn't have to be oh. too elaborate or too wonderful or whatever, but it's always good to have a, a bit of Keep wine I think, I think as since, a garnish on the top. Since Nikki and I have known you, or Nikki's known you longer, I think you had a question about how she got started. Actually, actually, I was oh. waiting to ask you that. <laughs> what made you decide to get into mixing drinks? So, what got you here? Well, actually, this sounds pretty <laughs> terrible, but it is kind of funny in a way. As a as a child, <laughs> I used to make <laughs> drinks for my parents when I was like ten years old. I would make them handshaken martinis and usually vodka gimlets or gin gimlets. <laughs> And I enjoyed it. I thought it was fun. Plus, our family would go on cruise ships, and I would observe the bartenders, you know, making drinks. And I was fascinated, you know, by the That's process. And, and again, that was the era before mixes when people really used fresh ingredients and fresh juices. And I love Trader Vic's um, bartending books also. To me, that is the zenith um, source of information that, hey, let's get down to All the right. important part right here. Oh, we can grab our own. And let's drink up right. and see if these Cheers. if these live up to all the hype. Are you guys jealous? <laughs> oh yeah. Refreshing summer drink. Oh my god. And that's precisely what it should be is a ref refreshing summer drink. That's right. Yep. Beautiful. And again, you can buy a mojito mix, but it's gonna be inferior. And it's pointless because you know, it's a little bit of um a labor intensive you know, drink to make, but not so much so that it's prohibitive, you know, to make it this way. And, and you did some things to, for parties, right? I know to kind of get it um, to yes. make mass drinks faster. Yes, and that's another thing too. You can wow, this is good. <laughs> mass produce drinks without compromising and without resorting, again, you know, to using mixes. Um, when I make mojitos for a party, typically if it's an outdoor party like Brian often has, he uses plasticware, so I use a pitcher to do the muddling in. And then I pour it into the plasticware, and you know, of course, yeah, and it works include really well. all the mint, and, th and that works well. And you hold the ice off to the end, right? And so that yes. doesn't dilute, and that works great. Yeah. Yes, because you don't want the drink to become diluted. You want to add the ice last. Yep. And also the little extra rum. This I can so testify refreshing. it really works. Yeah, ask and anybody to come to the parties. Yeah. It's a, it's a refreshing summer drink, you know, no doubt about it. So when you were young, you'd watch the bartenders and make the drinks and kind of keep it in your head what they were doing? I literally did. And of course, after many, many years of making different types of drinks and trying to put my individual flourishes on them, again, it makes them more interesting. I watched the bartender. Yeah. And that's what, we, yeah. that's what we want. Yeah, I remember the hurricane. It's like, I thought it was just going to be rum and some punch. And you called and said, yeah, here's the ingredients to get. And oh, yes. I'm sure that'll be another show for you. But I think there were like 10 ingredients in it. Four and they were different amazing. types of rum, two different fruit juices. Yeah. And of course, a certain liqueur that, you know, makes the hurricane what it is, the passion fruit liqueur. 
And you make killer margaritas. Thank you. And that's Not another thing, too. You can after. <laughs> mass produce a margarita without resorting to using mixes. And we'll talk about that um, sometime in the future, mm. which, will, which will be good. Now, do you do gigs a lot? I do. I do quite a few gigs, um, oh. mostly corporate, some private parties, and also some um, academics from various different universities have hired me on. And it's really fun to watch academics loosen up after they've had a few drinks. Now, am I right about that you won for a bartending contest? I did. I yep. did, in fact. Um, I created a signature drink based on Sailor Jerry rum, That's which is one of rum. my favorite rums, not to... And I think we both had that, we had that drink. It was, uh, yeah, it was awesome. Glad that you guys enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. Very, very much so, in fact. Yeah. But at any rate, we're going to have future episodes, hopefully, of this program, and we'll talk more intensively about making different drinks and different styles of drinks. And always remember, drink responsibly. We want our community to be safe and well-spoken. Now, typically, I free pour when I make drinks, so I don't measure. And this can make it difficult sometimes to discern how, as an example, to make the mojito. And I thought, too, just for the sake of being a bit different, even though I prefer those chimney glasses, this glass is perfectly fine for making mojitos also. And as far as an approximation is concerned, for the rum, I would say take it about a third of the glass or even as low as a fourth. And for the mint, again, about a quarter of the glass is where you want to put the mint up to. And usually two to three um, spoons of sugar or a combination of white sugar and simple syrup. And for the limes, you want to use three sections of lime and you want to try to squeeze them pretty hard to get most of the juice out. And don't use a juicer, just use the quartered limes and squeeze them by hand. Because again, the infusion of the juices from the lime and the oils in the skin will come out. And yes, we do want to put the spent shells within the drink because again, it adds to the complexity of the flavor. And then top it off with sparkling water and you can add a bit more rum as I typically do also in making the mojito. Now, we talked a little bit about Caribbean style mojitos which are popular in this particular style, especially in the Dominican Republic um, Cuba and Puerto Rico. They tend to use dark rum or golden rum and brown sugar or demerara sugar instead of the white sugar and the light rum. But again, American palates are more accustomed to the lighter liquors and so forth. But that's something to keep in mind and actually that's a style of mojito that I personally prefer. But whatever you like is the key. There, there are no rules as far as that is concerned. But a word again about one of the reasons why not to use mixes. And I know I'm really emphasizing not using them a great deal. But mixes contain congeners and chemicals and additives. And a lot of times the hangover that people attribute to the alcohol actually comes from the mix and all those chemicals. That's why people feel dreadful afterwards or, or the morning after as they say. So you'll spare yourself a hangover and not feeling particularly well if you avoid the use of mixes. And again, there are some who are going to argue that we have high-end mixes nowadays um, and they're better than the cheap ones. And while that may be so, there is still not a substitute for, for fresh ingredients. And that's true with any drink. It certainly is true with a mojito. And in the Caribbean, there's other drinks that will discuss perhaps in, in future episodes. We all know about Cuban Libras and of course there's drinks um, from the Pacific Rim like Planters Punches and Singapore Slings and of course Mai Tais and various other tropical drinks that are kind of related to some of the drinks in the Caribbean and they have their own interesting points and their own nuances too that, that we'll get into. And one thing that we want to emphasize too is it's good to enjoy drinks but always enjoy in moderation. We want to make sure that we drink responsi responsibly and that we keep our community safe and well spoken of. And thank you again for tuning in to Good Library.